Hey guys, welcome. Yeah, so we're going to resume our fun challenging integrals video series and this is part 18. And here we have a pretty cool integral that we're going to have a very novel and interesting approach uh, to solve, right? And we're going to use Laplace transforms to solve this integral. Remember, by definition, the Laplace transform of some function f of t, which is also called capital F of s. So here, capital F of s is the same as writing this here. It's just symbolic representation of the Laplace transform of some function small f of t. And yeah, so capital F of s, the Laplace transform, is defined to be the integral from zero to infinity of little f of t. Well, yeah, there is no capital F of t, but yeah, f of t times e to the negative st um, times dt. Yeah? Okay, where this s here is a constant. All right, so this is just a definition of the Laplace transform. So then, by a video that I've already made, uh, we know that the Laplace transform of uh, sine of a constant a times t is equal to this quotient here. And I'll link the video where I show you how to derive this below this video. So I'll link it below this. Yeah, but we know that this is true. So then, the Laplace transform of sine 2t uh, is going to be equal to this. And that's just me like using what I derived um, with this here, um, yeah, and applying it to the case where a is 2, right? So, yeah, so then this here is capital F of s, um, and therefore the Laplace transform for the function sine of 2t, this here, yeah? Okay, cool, cool, cool. Uh, by another video I've already made, which I'll also link below this video, we know that the Laplace transform of t times f of t is equal to the negative of the derivative of the Laplace transform of f of t. So if you want to know the Laplace, tra the Laplace transform of t times f of t, all you have to do is take the Laplace transform of f of t and then take the derivative and then negate that derivative or take the negative of that derivative, right? So again, like just to make sure I, my language wasn't very clear there. So yeah, you take the Laplace transform of f of t and then you take the derivative of that and then you take the negative of that, and then you'll have the Laplace transform of t times f of t. Yeah? Okay, cool. So we can use this little formula here. And again, I'll link the video where I derive this below this video. But yeah, we can use this little formula here uh, and claim that the Laplace transform of t times sine 2t is equal to the negative of the derivative of this here, which is the Laplace transform of sine 2t from what I've written above, right? Okay, cool, cool, cool. So uh, now it's derivative time, so we have to take the derivative of this quotient here. And obviously, I've highlighted the negative sign so we don't forget. But yeah, I don't want to use quotient rule here, so I rewrite this so that I could just use the power rule and chain rule for derivatives. And so first, we rewrite this quotient like this, and then apply the power rule and chain rule, and you get this, and simplify this a little bit more, and you get this, simplify it some more, and finally, we can write this. Now we need some space, so uh, let's get some space and remind ourselves of what we just uh, figured out, which is that the Laplace transform of t times sine 2t, which is equal to this, simplifies all the way to this. Yeah? Okay, cool. So where to from here? But wait, the Laplace transform of t times sine 2t, by definition, is equal to the integral from 0 to infinity of um, f of t, which in this case is t times sine uh, 2t, and then times e to the negative st dt. This is just by the definition of the Laplace transform. This here is the same as this here, which in turn is the same as this here, uh, which is in turn equal to this. And so by like a couple of transitive properties, we know that this here is equal to this here. So where to from here? Well, we just make the constant s equal to one, and we'll have this integral right here transform to the integral that we're trying to solve. When s is equal to one, this integral here, which is this here is the same as the original integral that we're trying to solve. And since we know that this here is equal to this here, well, this here must equal this here, yeah? And of course, simplifying this a little bit more, we see that uh, our integral, uh, zero to infinity of oh, this whole stuff, is equal to four over 25. And that's it for me, and I hope you enjoyed this video. All right, keep watching, take care.